for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another update video for you guys today. There have actually been two updates, and I'm going to go over both of them because the first one you might have missed. It wasn't huge. It's especially it's small. <laughs> it's so small. It was kind of tiny. Uh, it was only a few things that changed, and they really didn't go into great detail. But I'm going to go over that. I'm going to go over the current state of uh, Mad 23 and some of the issues that are, people are having, uh, as well as when we can expect the next update uh, to really address some of these major issues. But I'm also going to go over player ratings that change because obviously every week they're doing that and I try to make a video about that every single week. It just gives me easy Thursday content. So if you guys want to see more videos like this every Thursday or whenever they do updates, Woo! whenever they do roster updates, hit the like button let me know in the comment section to make sure to be a subscriber. Other than that, let's go and get right into some of the major updates as far as the gameplay fixes and the uh, some of the you know patches that they put out. This was actually put out a day or two ago. Like I said, I didn't make a video back then because it was so small. And all this is really saying is that we have some stability improvements and addressed a rare model issue. Now, those, that's like I said, that's why I didn't do a video about it. Those are so tiny. They go into a little bit more detail about when they'll get some of the franchise mode fixes. But when I see things like addressed a rare <laughs> player model issue, I'm guessing that's face of the franchise. But rare issues aren't really the problem right now. So it's like that isn't really worth reporting. I mean, we want we have major issues that a lot of people are struggling with, especially when it comes to franchise mode. There's people out there that can't even play their franchises, which is the reason they buy the game because of the issues that are happening when it comes to um, you know when it comes to Madden I mean I don't play franchise myself I, I want to dabble with it I used to play franchise a lot more if you watch this channel a couple years ago when I started my channel I was a big franchise player I kind of got away from it because I just don't have time to be on a schedule with other people uh, but I love CFM I love online CFM in the past and I really want to do that in the future but when I hear these issues are happening it really doesn't make sense for me to try if that's really what's going on if they're having so many issues you know stability improvement is is what like I have no idea what that means and they, and that's 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 purposefully uh, you know general in, in in a way that it's like they're not really telling you anything because they probably didn't do much of anything yet uh, which is kind of disappointing because I know a lot of people are really waiting so they can enjoy the game that they paid 60 70 or maybe even a hundred dollars for depending on when you bought it now there is um, a lot of stuff going on in Florida right now as far as the uh, hurricane Ian they're based in Florida so they might be having their own issues I think EA Tiburon is in Florida so they might be having their own issues as far as um, dealing with the weather and stuff like that. Obviously, everybody is right now. So that's something that you're even seeing when you hop on the game. You're seeing these like posts come up about how they're 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 struggling with the weather down there and how they're um, it's going to delay future updates and stuff like that. At least updates that actually have you know something to them. Uh, and they're saying that this one is targeted for mid October. Uh, and I don't know if they specifically, it, it says they do specifically mention that they're aware of the franchise mode issues, but this is completely separate. So just because they're saying that they're targeting a mid October, which could be late October, and we've seen them say that they're targeting, uh, even in their good conditions without a hurricane to deal with, they've tried to target a uh, franchise for patches that got put out last year way later than expected. So this really doesn't mean anything to me that they're targeting something. I mean, targeting doesn't mean you can target anything and miss by a mile, which they've done in the past. That's their history. So them saying uh, that they're targeting for a mid-October update and the full updates, um, you know, like a real update, not whatever this is, uh, doesn't really give me a ton of hope. This year really has been, I mean, the gameplay is like really, to me, the gameplay is amazing. I love the gameplay. That's the funnest part. That's why all you ever see me do is play regs because it's just, I just want to hop on and play the damn game. I really don't want to build a team in any capacity. I don't want to go through any of this other nonsense that's happening in these other game modes. This is the funnest game mode right now. But let's go and let's get on to some of the, the funner stuff instead of just complaining about the game because that's not really what I want to do. Because at the end of the day, I enjoy the game still. I love playing the game. I just played an amazing gameplay that I I can't wait to bring to you guys. Uh, it was an absolute crazy game. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the small ones that were reported away from like the main article that I'm going to read because the main article that I'm going to read really just seems to focus on like the major players. So these are going to be ones that were just tweeted out uh, by EA themselves. Uh, the first one I'm going to start off with because I mentioned this in the last video at the end of the last video when I did this update was Jalen Hurts not getting enough attention. I still don't feel like he's getting enough of a ratings boost, but he did get a one point ratings boost, uh, a one point ratings boost. And the, the caption on the Twitter feed was MVP front runner at Jalen Hurts plus one up to 77 overall. 
MVP, MVP front runners, Jalen Hurts. I mean, they, they're saying he's an MVP front runner. Why is he only getting a one point boost? Especially when I tell you one of the other MVP front runners is getting a three point boost, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But when you can, when you compare, I mean, this guy, he's only a 77 overall. He's playing clearly better than that. He could, should be like an 80 at least by by now at this point. Probably should have got a one point boost every week since the season started because he's played phenomenal in every game. We also got a one point ratings boost for Drake London, the uh, the rookie who's having a really strong rookie year, by the way for Atlanta. I was kind of out on him coming into the league. I'm mean, not out on him, but I wasn't 100% sure considering that. I just didn't know if he could get separation. I love his size though. That's the thing. You don't have to get separation when you're like 6'5 or 6'6 or whatever he is. Uh, I think he's listed here at 6'4, but you got to love his size. He obviously is a good player. Good pick for Atlanta. Have it for you Atlanta fans. Then you got Jamel Dean who's getting a looks, looks like a plus one. So let's get some of the bigger names now. So we're going to start off with the second highest player on this list, and that's Lamar Jackson, because I just mentioned how he's probably, I don't know who's really in the MVP favorite right now, but considering that Jalen Hurts hasn't lost yet, you got to think it's Jalen Hurts. But between those two players, that's really your, your best player in the NFC right now and your best player in the AFC when it comes to uh, MVP odds. So Lamar Jackson gets a plus three. He was already an 88 overall. He got a plus one last week to an 89, I think. I'm not really sure. I think he was an 87 to an 88. And I already mentioned he was still too low, even when those uh, came out. If you watch my last my week, you know, last week's video, and now he gets a plus three, which is way closer. By the end of the season, if he has an MVP season, he better be like a 95 or more, uh, because Lamar Jackson already has a unanimous MVP on his record. He's already, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I don't know why he had such a discounted rating coming into the season. I feel like you could say, based off of the offensive weaponry at receiver around him, that you could have said maybe they were predicting a bad season, but that has nothing to do with him personally and his rating. So it's good to see that they're 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 speeding up his recovery here, even though realistically it should have never have been that low. Now the top player on this list to get a bump is Mark Andrews, another guy who easily could be considered the best tight end in the game after his season last year, had one of the best seasons for tight ends in the league, and he's also a very good blocker. It's not just about the statistics of catching. He's an all-around player so he gets a plus one he's up to a 95 uh, but that's something that I should you could continue to, to continue to see moving up as I'm stumbling on my words continuing with the Ravens they also gave Marlon Humphrey a plus one overall to a 91 and Roquan Smith gets a plus one to a 90 uh, Mark Demarcus Lawrence some of these are funny because they dropped Demarcus Lawrence to point last week only to bump him back up to an 89 and give him a one point back and in that video I said that I thought he deserved it honestly coming off of the Giants performance the Giants offense of line just absolutely stunk including Evan Neal who uh, is not looking very good as a top 10 pick right now he basically was the biggest issue and he, I think he's the reason that DeMarcus Lawrence is getting his ratings bump DeMarcus Lawrence was just running right around him why would you drop him and then bump him back up the, these ratings are way too like knee-jerk reaction they should they should be based off of a little bit more of a consistent pattern than what they are rather than just playing with the with the ratings adjustment every week Ezekiel Elliott gets a plus one I fully agree with that I feel like he He's probably the MVP of the Cowboys right now based off of what um, he's doing on the ground. He looks he looks like he's turning the clock back a little bit. He looks like he's um, much just much more rejuvenated. He's running with a little more power and a little bit more speed. I fully agree with that. Laramie Tunsil, plus one overall to an 89. He's always been one of the left tackle, best left tackles in the game. Adam Thielen gets a plus one. He's another one. He was dropped minus one. Now he's back up to an 88 plus one. I don't know what he did last week, but once again, why why are these ratings not based off of more consistency over a, a, a longer period of time? It just doesn't make sense. DJ Reader gets another plus one. He had to get a plus one last week. Josh Allen gets another plus one. He had a plus one last week as well. So he's they're both up to 87s. Kareem Hunt gets a plus one up to an 87. Uh, they just bumped up. Up Chubb last week to a, to a 98, so that backfield is looking great. Marcus Peters, uh, another plus one. I don't know why. He seems kind of low in general. Uh, Chidobi Awuzie, plus one. He's up to an 86. And Cordell Patterson, plus one, who, um, you know, I, these are all, I agree with all. I'm just going to go through the rest of the plus ones here. Corlin Sutton, plus one. Deontay Johnson and Jalen Waddle, all plus ones up to 86s all very good young players all right so now we're gonna go to the back to the going down uh and a couple of these were up last week so it's like you know it just doesn't make sense how they're jumping these guys from week to week like this but david bakhtiari goes down a point to a 93 jonathan allen down a point to a 91 darren waller down two points that's the biggest drop they even highlighted that bad boy uh but he's still fast i mean to man players nobody really cares because he's the, one of the fastest tight ends but he's got a negative too so i don't know what's going on with him he's down to an 89 overall the force buckner and minus one down to an 89 Alvin Kamara, I'm pretty sure he dropped again. Last week he was a uh, he dropped a point, so now he's down to an 88. 
which I don't know. I mean, I know that he's got to be the focal point of defenses when they're playing the Saints. Jeffrey Simmons, minus one. He was plus one last week, so he's right back to where he was at an 88. Brandon Cooks, minus one. He was plus one last week, too, so he's right back to where he was in 87. Kendall Fuller, minus one overall. Uh, he's bet down in 87. Austin Kelly minus one. Deron Payne, minus one. Matthew Judon and Shaq Mason, all minus one down to 86s. So that's it for the big names. Uh, I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more update videos like this, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section. Other than that, make sure to be a subscriber. I have a, a video popping up on the screen if you guys want to see a gameplay that I just put out that's a little bit more about the gameplay than me just reading over a gameplay. So if you want to see that, just click the link. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.